revelation from the Lord. Wow. When I read that, can I tell you what I read? As a person who knows the word and as a person who knows the Lord, this is what I read. Yet, miracle, you can still dare. What is dare? What is dare? Tell me what daring is. What is daring hope? I preach it all the time. Daring faith is coming to the edge of your cliff and jumping and say, catch me, Daddy, I'm going to jump. Dare. The three Hebrew children dared not to bend their knee. They dared. Well, if he delivers us, great. If he doesn't, that's great too. That's daring. Think of all the Bible stories that were daring. And what this said to me was, I can dare to hope for a miracle in the midst of this hideous report when I remember this, that all things are possible with God. Matthew 19, 28. All things are possible with all things. Say it with me. All things. All things. All things. All. That's an all-inclusive word. All things. We pray. Do you remember praying for God to put the bottom of the radiator of our car when it blew out up in Arkansas and we had to go all the way to Louisiana? And we knelt there and prayed. And the car started. We drove all the way. I remember when my mother was hemorrhaging. And I was in uh, below Pine Bluff. And it was before all the gas stations were on the road. It was before interstates. And I ran out of gas in her car, which was a Cadillac. I ran out of gas in that car. And I beat the steering wheel. <laughs> Emotional. <laughs> and I said, oh, God put gas in this car and I cranked that car and I drove all the way to Little Rock, Arkansas on the back roads on an empty tank of gasoline because all, thi all things, all things are possible with God. Okay, and Luke one thirty seven says nothing. Is that not an all-inclusive word? Nothing? Nothing? Nothing. Nothing is impossible for God. Say it with me. Nothing is impossible for God. Now I want to tell you, you can say it with your mouth, you can read it with your eyes, but until it gets in your mind, your heart and your mind, the battle is won in your heart and in your mind. When it takes root in your mind, that God can do anything, that nothing is impossible with God, then and only then can we walk a fearless life. Then and only then can we walk a true freedom life. Then and only then, when it takes root in our heart, because what does the Bible say? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So you can say all that long, all things are possible with God. Oh, oh, but. Well, the word says, all things are possible with God. All things are possible with God. But you just don't know what all things are. It hasn't gotten in here. It hasn't gotten in here. The all things, the nothing is impossible. The we, we have stories of how God brought food when there was no food. And, and, and this was back in the old days, but I remember Mikey telling me a story recently back uh, a few years ago when he was totally, 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 totally broke. And he did not tell us he was totally broke. And he went into the restaurant and he was with his buddies. And his buddies ordered something to eat. And he was so hungry. And you bet him he's big and he can eat. He was so hungry, but he didn't order anything. He ordered a glass of water because he had no money whatsoever. Now, he could have called us, but he didn't. And in a minute, the waitress came over and she said, Sir, we had a Miss Cook in the kitchen. And I'm embarrassed to say this, but I would like to bring that to you. Would you like that meal tonight? And he calls his mother, look how God provided for me. All things are possible. There is nothing that is impossible with God. 
And then Mark says in 1027, but with God all things are possible. All things are possible to who? To him who believes. Mark 9, 23. And then I love this in Genesis. Is there anything too hard for God to do? When I read, miracle, you can dare to hope for a miracle if you will just remember what I've already done. I read this morning, Brother, Brother Larry, I was sitting in church, and, and you know, it's, it's, we seem to go from one battle to another one. Constantly there are battles coming and going in our lives. And, and I had a little battle going on in my life. And I opened my Bible this morning and I read this. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves. I, I, I don't even know that I knew this was in the Word, but I just, it was the first thing I opened up when, when uh, the service was going on. I opened up my Bible just so it would be ready to open, and it, it just came open to this in 2 Corinthians. We had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead, who delivered us from this great death. Now listen. And he doth deliver us, and in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. That was a message to me. I needed to hear that. So when I read that, it said, Miracle, you can dare to hope and believe for a miracle if you will remember nothing is impossible with me. If you will remember that I healed you of cancer when you were sent home to die. That I healed you when the doctor said you could not be well. That I gave life back to Mikey when he died five times. I breathed life back into him. That I gave Melissa children when she medically was to have no children. When you look back over what I have done, you can dare to hope for a miracle. I want to tell you, what you think really does matter. Yes. And I want to tell you this, a made up mind, a positive mind, a mind that goes be through the word of God and believes it, is a powerful tool in the hands of a supernatural God. Our God can knock this building down and build it back instantly. Our God can do anything. And if a plane I'm in goes down and it is not God's time for me to die, I'm not going to die. And if the doctor says to me, you are covered in cancer and you're going to die, if it is not God's time for me to die, I am not going to die. Juanita Allen, when I was conceived in her womb and she carried me in her womb, <coughs> my days were numbered right then and there. And until God says it's over, it is not over. And I don't just say that. Listen to me, church. I believe that. It is in my mind and it is in my heart. And listen to me. The devil is a liar. I want to tell you the truth is not in him. Didn't Mike say it today? Lying is his native tongue. And what does he do? He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy your life. He hates you. He hates us. Oh my goodness. And you know, this very time we were in Africa and we were told of a shortcut. <coughs> oh, don't ever listen to an African that tells you a way to go when they've never ridden in a car. And we took a shortcut that was supposed to be three hours and after ten we were still on this road. And we had no clue except for my husband's great sense of direction where we were. But we were in a valley and the dust was powder puff. The road was paved just like you had done a gazillion gallons of powder and, and a flower because it was just clogging up the motor. It was clogging up the engine. It was, you could hardly see. And all of a sudden, a black cloud formed. 
And I thought, this will settle the dust. Oh, I had no idea what was about to happen. I mean, the rain came. The storm came. The flood came. And it started coming down that valley. And you could see that wall of water. Oh, we're sunk. I mean, there was no getting around it. There was no way to get out of it. There was nowhere to go. And that water came, and it rushed, and it came. And I couldn't look at it, brother. I could not look at it. I bowed my head over the dash, and I began, Dios, Torre, deliver us, Lord, deliver us. When I looked out my window, my heart sunk with fear because the water was this below my window. Bottom. I mean, it had come way past the door up to my window in a land cruiser, a big, tall car, and it was rushing, and Mike was grinding the, the uh, four-wheel drive. He totally burned a, what did it cost us, $3,500? Was that the cost to repair the four-wheel drive fighting that flood of water? You know when they have a snorkel and they say you're supposed to go in water taller than the car, don't you ever buy that or believe it. It is not the truth. When the water comes up past your window and without the power of God, you're sunk. Literally. And so we were stuck and the water came and the water came and the water came. 45 minutes later, he's still fighting it, he's still fighting it and then the water left. It was amazing. And then the Maasai came. This is an area we, we weren't, we hadn't, I walked in there in 1982 uh, preaching, but we've not really, well, we did hold a crusade back into that area. But these Maasai came, and, and in Maasai they said, you're stuck. Yeah, we're stuck. And so they started digging with their spears to get us out. It was amazing that God brought assembly of God, spirit filled, my side, from our little church. They were elders in the church to come and rescue us when we would have been sitting ducks for anything. Lions, elephants, anything. God delivers. What am I saying with this story? The circumstances may change. It could be a lion outside of your tent that wants to eat you. It could, you know, it could be a puff out right at your feet that wants to bite you. It could be cancer raging through your body. It could be the loss of your job. It could be the raging river coming down to destroy you in the middle of nowhere. The circumstances change. the message is still the same. It doesn't change. Nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible with God. You put your name there. You can dare to hope when you remember that. When it comes in your mind. When it gets in your spirit. Not just something you quote. Not just something you read. How can we get to that spirit filled life? How can we get it to our mind and our heart? We can be delivered from years of sexual abuse. Mentally, that we can be delivered from years of physical abuse. Mentally, that we can be delivered from years of drug abuse. <clears throat> Only by the Spirit of the Living God, when you open up your heart, Mike told me something yesterday. We. Uh, we're coming 